Today, we will be creating this amazing cutout transition inside the free version of the winter resort. I will also be sharing project files in a community post, which will be available for the channel members only. So, if you are interested, you can get it for just 29 rupees. Alright, let's jump in. Okay, so here I am on the edit page and as you can see, I have already added two clips and that's all I have since I am not going to use any music. But of course, you are going to use it. So, just go ahead and add it. And don't forget to add the clips as well. Okay. Now, the first thing we are going to do is find the point from where our transition will start. So, for that, simply move the playback head around your first clip until you find a proper point. I believe somewhere around here where the character head is moving is actually a good point. So, let me keep the playback head at 1 second and 14 frames because at this point the head moves properly. Alright, now what we are going to do is mark this point so that we don't lose it by any chance. But first make sure that nothing is selected, then simply press M to add a marker. Now you can just go ahead and mark the bits according to the music you have. I don't have any music so I am adding the markers randomly. Now what we are going to do is remove the background of our second clip. But before that we need to save it as a still image. So, place the playback head in the beginning of our second clip. Then go to this top left section and here you will see this option called file. Click on it and from this menu look for this option called export. Then go around here and at the bottom you will see this option called current frame as still. Just click on it and it will open the file manager. You can rename it however you like. Then press the export button to save it as a still image. Now you can either remove the background in the Vinci Resolve or what you can do is simply use pre AI tool to do your job. I am going to use the AI method since it's faster but for that we need to leave the Vinci Resolve for a while. So just open in any browser you like then go to this search bar and type adobe background remover press enter to search for it and on this page click on this first link and it will open this website now just click on this upload your photo button select the image then press enter to upload it let it process properly and once done you'll have something like this now if you notice we still have this guy but don't worry we can easily remove him in davinci resolve but before that let's download it by clicking on this download button then let me just click here and open it in the davinci resolve let me place it somewhere around here then I will go to this first marker and click on this image and drag it where our playback head is. Okay. Now you can go to the beginning of your second clip and at this point simply press Ctrl plus D to make a cut. Then select the right side of this image and press backspace to delete it. Now let's place the playback head on top of it and in order to remove this guy simply open it in the fusion page. Then with this media in on node selected add a polygon node to it and everything will disappear. So we need to go to the inspector and disable the node for now. Now just go around here then click and start creating a mask like this. You don't have to be precise, just create a rough mask like this. Now let's enable the polygon node and you will see everything has disappeared except this guy. But we want the opposite. So tick this invert box. Now if I double click here, you will see we have something like this. And that's all we needed. Now let's go to the edit page. So now what we are going to do is right click on this clip and convert it into a compound clip. Let's rename it as clip 3. Then press the enter button to create a compound clip. Now let's go to the first marker and at this point, click on this clip, then press alt and drag it upwards to make a copy then select this clip and place it where your second marker is okay and now we need to repeat the process so press alt once again and drag it to make another copy then select this clip and place it where your third marker is now if i go around here then press shift and use the mouse wheel we can string the timeline like this now let's click on this alt button once again then click on this clip and move it upwards to make another copy and place this one in the foot marker all right so now what we're going to do is click on the end of each clips and trim them down like this so let's do this for the second clip, trim it down like this and for the third clip as well, let's trim it down like this. Alright, now let me just go around here and click on the scroll wheel and drag it to the right side like this and let's go around here and place them like this. Okay, now let's get the transition and the first thing we are going to do is create the white class. But for that, we need to make another copy of our clip. So let me click on this foot clip and make a copy of it. Then I will click here and place it where our playback head is. Let's also bring it down like this. And for this clip, we need the duration to be on frame long. So let's go to the ending and trim it down until it's on frame long. Now to create the class, just open it in the fusion page. Alright, so on we are in fusion, you'll have something like this. Now now the first thing we are going to do is create the mask then we will add the white flash. And to create the mask we are going to use the rectangle mask node. So with this media in on node selected add a rectangle mask node to it. And once you add it you will have something like this. So we need to adjust a few things. And the first thing we are going to adjust is the width. So let me just click here and drag it like this. Now let's also adjust the height. So I am going to click on this top section and bring it down like this. Let's keep it somewhere around here. Now if you want to see the exact value you just need to go to the inspector and here you will see this height and width. And 
and on this section you will see the values now keep in mind that there will be total four cutouts and this will be the top part so in order to move it upwards i will just click on this center y box and drag it upwards like this let's keep it somewhere around here and if i double click here you will see we'll have something like this now it's looking quite good but we need to soften the edges of our mask so to do this just go to the inspector and here you will see this soft edge option simply double click on this box and change the value to something like 0 0.025 let's click here on to apply the changes and we'll have something like this now let's get the white flash so for that click on this media in one node and add a brightness and contrast node then just go to the inspector and here you will see this brightness option click on the slider and drag it all the way up now you see it's affecting the whole screen but we want it to affect the mask area only so to do this go to this bottom section and here you will see this pre-divide and post multiply just tick this box and now it's affecting the character only okay now let's also add a little bit of glow to it so with this brightness and contrast node selected press ctrl plus space and search for soft glow press enter to add it uh, you will see by default the glow is something like this so let's go to the inspector and first we are going to adjust the glow size so just click on the slider and drag it somewhere around here then let's also adjust the gain so click on the slider and bring it down like this let's keep it somewhere around 0.5 and i guess it's looking pretty cool all right so now what we're going to do is click on this rectangle node and press ctrl plus c to copy it now let's open it in the edit page Alright, so this is how it's looking. Now what we have to do is apply the mask on this clip as well. So let me place the playbacker on top of it and open it in the fusion page. Now just place the mask by pressing Ctrl plus V. Then open it in the edit page on second and we'll have something like this. Now let's create the second part. So place the playback head on this second marker. Then click on this clip, press Alt and drag it upwards to make a copy. Then click here and place it where your playback head is. Now for this one, we need to adjust the mask. So open it in the fusion page. So now what we're going to do is create the middle section and you can do this by by simply going to the viewer then clicking on this up arrow and bring it down like this but there is a problem once you bring it down our top section will disappear and it will be quite hard to match the edges properly so what we're going to do instead is click on this rectangle node and move it upwards like this then just place the rectangle mask on second now with this copied mask selected you can simply go to the viewer and click on this up arrow and bring it down like this now you can see the edges so we need to move it a little bit upwards to match it properly now if i double click here you will see we'll have something like this so now now you can just click on this rectangle node and press backslash to delete it then just select this node press ctrl plus c to copy it now let's open it in the edit page and this is how it's looking and the rest of the process is actually same you need to place the playback head on top of this clip and open it in the fusion page then just place the mask by pressing ctrl plus v now we just need to repeat the same process for the rest of the clips i'm going to skip this process to save the time once you are done with all of the clips you will have something like this and i believe it's looking pretty cool but we can make it even more better by adding some hard sex to it. So let's do this. Now before we add the sec, what we are going to do is simply select all these clips like this. Then right click on any of them and convert them into compound clip. Now let's rename it as cutout and press enter to save it. Now what we are going to do is go to the beginning of our second clip. And at this point, simply go to this top left section. And here you will see this effects icon. Click to add it. Then in the toolbox, go to this effects section. And here you will see this adjustment clip. Just click and drag it to the timeline. Then place it where your first marker is. Now you can simply move somewhere around here. Maybe half of the second clip. And at this point, click on this adjustment clip. Then simply press Ctrl plus V to make a cut. Now just select the right side of it. And press backspace to delete it. Then just go back to the beginning of our second clip. Now I will not go to the full details of creating hard shape. So if you want to learn it properly, you can simply check out this tutorial. Now let's open it in the fusion page. Alright, so on your in fusion, you will have something like this. And we are currently at frame 18. Make sure to remember it. Now the first thing we are going to do is add the camera sec. So for that simply press ctrl plus space and look for the camera sec. We are going to use the first one. So simply press enter to add it. You will have something like this. So let's go to the inspector and the first thing we are going to change is the edges. So click here and change the edges to mirror. Now if you want you can simply go to this rotation deviation and drag the slide a little bit like this. And also increase the randomness or decrease it however you like. Okay. Now the main thing. Add a keyframe for the overall strength. Then just go back 4 frames which will be frame 14. Go to the inspector and decrease the overall strength to 0. Now go to the frame 18 on second and from there we are going to move forward 4 frames which will be frame 22 and at this point as well we are going to decrease the overall strength to 0. Now let's open this spline tab, tick this overall strength box, click on this zoom to fit icon, select the keyframes and press S on your keyboard. Now just follow me, take this bottom left handle and drag it like this. Now take this bottom right handle and drag it like this as well. Now go to this top section and click on this top left handle and drag it somewhere around here. Then click on this top right handle 
handle and drag it all the way around here now what we're going to do is with this camera not selected simply press ctrl plus space and look for directional blur we're going to add the first one so simply press enter to add it then go to the frame 18 simply go to the inspector and add a keyframe for the length double click on this box and change the length to something like minus 0.4 let's click here on to apply the changes and we'll have something like this now we are going to adjust the angle so simply double click here and change the angle to minus 45 let's click here on to apply the changes and we'll have something like this now let's go four frames backward and at this point just double click on this length box and change the value to 0 let's click here on to apply the changes now let's go to frame 22 we are going to double click on this length box once again and change the value to 0 as well let's click here on to apply the changes now let me deselect this camera set box and click on this zoom to fit icon now just select the keyframes and press s on your keyboard take this top handle and drag it somewhere around here now take this top right handle and drag it around here like this we are going to take this bottom left handle and drag it slightly like this then we are going to take this bottom right handle and drag it all the way around here now what we are going to do is add another camera set press ctrl plus space and search for the camera set once again press enter to add it then go to the inspector and change the edges to mirror then go to frame 18 simply go to the inspector and we are going to change the overall strength little bit so let me double click on this box change the strength to something like 0.45 and add a keyframe to it now this time go to frame 0 then go to the inspector and decrease the overall strength to 0 as well now what we are going to do is go to frame 18 and from here let's move 10 frames forward and at this point we are going to decrease the overall strength to 0 as well now let me double click on this directional blur box to deselect it then click on this zoom to fit icon select the keyframes and press s on your keyboard take this bottom left handle and drag it like this take this bottom right handle and drag it somewhere around here now just click on this top left handle and drag it like this and also take this top right handle and drag it all the way around here. Now let's close this spline tab and open it in the edit page. Now if I go to the starting point then double click here and play it you'll see we'll have something like this and I believe it's looking pretty cool but we can make it even more better by adding little bit flash to it so for that simply go to the beginning of our second clip go to this left side and here you will see this generator tab switch to it and in this list find the option called solid color drag it to the timeline then place it where your playback head is now by default the solid color is black but we need to change it to white so let's go to the inspector and click on this color tab then change it to white let me click on this ok button to save it and now what we're going to do is move backward on frame and at this point just click on this solid color and place it where your playback head is now if you want you can keep it on frame long or two frame long it depends on you i'm going to keep it on frame long and at this point what i'm going to do is simply press ctrl plus b then select the right side of it and press backspace to delete it now if i go to the starting point then double click here and play it you will see we'll have something like this and i believe it's looking pretty cool but we can make it even more better by adding the ripple effect if you don't know how to create it, you can simply check out this video. Or what you can do is simply go to the video description and there you will see a link to download the effect. And that's exactly the effect that I'm going to use. So go ahead and download it. Once you download it, you need to import it. And for that, simply go to this top left section, then switch to this media pool. Now right click on this empty area and from this menu, look for this option called import bin. Just click on it and look at the folder where you have the ripple effect. It's called the BCC ripple, so I will select it and press enter to import it. Once imported, you will have this folder called BCC ripple. Double click to open it, then click on this ripple effect and drag it to the timeline. Click on it and place it where our playback head is. Now if you notice, it's showing this error called media offline. So in order to fix it, just open it in the fusion page, then select this media 2 node and press backslash to delete it. Now just go to the media pool and here you will see this overlay called ripple effect. Simply click and drag it to the workspace and connect it with the green input of our merge node. And once you do it, you will have something like this. Now let's open it in the edit page and preview it. We'll have something like this. And I believe it's looking pretty cool. So that's how you create this amazing cutout transition inside the pre version of DaVinci Resolve. If this tutorial was helpful, then give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to watch my other videos. I will see you in the next video. Till then, see ya.